Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 20 on measure and integration. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started defining what is called the notion of uh, a function to be an integrable function and then we started looking at some of the properties of integrable functions. Uh, let us just recall uh, what is a integrable function and then we will uh, start looking at uh, uh, various properties of these integrable functions and we will prove one important theorem called dominated convergence theorem. So, if you recall, we said a measurable function f on x to extended real valued measurable function f is said to be integrable with respect to mu and written as mu integrable if both the integral of the positive part of the function and the negative part of the function are finite. So, we say f is mu integrable if integral f plus d mu and integral f minus d mu both are finite uh, numbers. And in that case, we say uh, uh, the integral of f uh, is equal to uh, integral of f plus minus integral of f minus. So, let us just once again uh, emphasize saying that a function is mu integrable is if and only if both f plus and f minus are uh, having finite integrals and the integral of f is written as integral of f plus minus integral of f minus. The class of all uh, integrable functions uh, on the measure space x s mu is normally denoted by L 1 capital L lower 1 x s mu or uh, sometimes so we drop uh, s and mu if they are clear from the context that uh, what are the uh, sigma algebras or what is the measure or sometimes we just emphasize mu uh, because we want to uh, we know what is x and what is s. So, these are various notations used for uh, denoting uh, integrable functions L 1 x s mu or L 1 bracket x or L 1 bracket mu. So, this is the space of all mu integrable functions. We will start in looking at the properties of these uh, functions. The first important thing we observed was a function f is which is measurable is integrable if and only if mod f which is a non negative function is integrable. That means, uh, to check whether a function a measurable function is integrable or not it is to enough to uh, look at the integral of the function mod f and see whether that is finite or not. And uh, in that case and uh, uh, this is always true and the uh, for the integrable function uh, integral of mod f uh, integral uh, mod of the integral of f d mu is less than or equal to integral of uh, mod f d mu. So, uh, this is an important uh, criteria, this is an equivalent definition, equivalent way of defining uh, integrability of uh, a measurable function namely mod f is measurable. Uh, this is not equal, so this is a, this is wrong here, it should be uh, less than or equal to. So, integral of uh, mod of integral f d mu is less than or equal to, so this is a, a typing mistake here, this should have been less than or equal to integral of mod f d mu. Let us uh, recall some of the other properties that we had proved. We said if f and g are measurable functions and mod f is less than or equal to g of x for almost all x uh, with respect to mu and g is integrable, then f is also integrable. That means, if a function f of x is dominated by an integrable function, then that measurable function automatically becomes uh, integrable. And uh, we also proved the following property namely if two functions f and g are equal almost everywhere 
and one of them is integrable say f is integrable then the function g is also integrable and integral of f is equal to integral of g. So, that essentially says that the integral of the function does not change if the function is changed um, if the values of the functions are changed almost everywhere. So, f equal to g almost everywhere f and g measurable functions um, and one of them say f integrable implies g is integral integrable and the integral of the two are equal. We also proved the following property namely if f is a integrable function and alpha is a any uh, real number then alpha time f is also uh, integrable and the integral of alpha f uh, is equal to alpha times the integral of f. So, we continue this study of uh, properties of integrable functions and next we want to check the integrability property namely if f and g are integrable functions then we want to show that f plus g is also integrable and integral of f plus g is equal to integral f plus integral g. So, to prove this property let us uh, look at what we are given. So, we are given that f and g are integrable functions that is integral mod f d mu is finite and integral of g d mu is also absolute value of g uh, with respect to mu is also finite. So, to check whether the function f plus g is integrable or not we have to look at the integral of f plus g absolute value and show that integral of absolute value of f plus g is also finite, but that follows easily because absolute value of f plus g is always less than or equal to absolute value of f plus absolute value of g. So, and all are non negative measurable functions. So, using the property of the integral for non negative measurable functions this implies that integral of mod f plus g d mu is less than or equal to integral of mod f plus mod g d mu and that by linearity is same as integral mod f d mu plus integral mod g d mu and we are given that both of them are finite. So, this is finite. So, implies that f plus g is integrable. To compute uh, the integral of f plus g we have to go back to the definition of uh, um, the integral. So, f and g integrable integrable. So, that implies integral of f plus d mu is finite integral of f minus d mu is finite integral of g plus the positive part of g is finite integral of g minus d mu is finite and we have to show. So, to show integral f plus g plus d mu finite and integral f plus g minus d mu is finite. So, these two properties we have to show. To show this somehow we have to relate the positive part of f plus g with the positive part of f and positive part of g and similarly the negative part of f plus g with the negative part of f and negative part of g and that is done as follows. So, what we do look at f plus g by definition we can write it as f plus g positive part minus f plus g the negative part. So, that is by the definition of the positive part and the negative part of a function. Also f plus g we can also write it as decompose f into positive part and the negative part. So, that is f plus minus f minus and similarly write g as g plus minus g minus. So, now from these two it follows that integral of uh, f sorry not the integral 
from this it follows that f plus g positive part minus f plus g the negative part is equal to f plus minus f minus plus g plus minus g minus right so from these two equations it follows this is so and now what we do is all the negative terms we shift on the other side of the equation so this implies that f plus g plus plus f minus plus g minus is equal to f plus plus g plus from here and this term on the other side will give me plus f plus g minus. So, we just rearrange the terms and now you observe that the left hand side is a non negative function and the right hand side is a non negative function. So, by the properties of integrals for non negative functions this implies that integral of f plus g plus d mu plus integral of f minus d mu plus integral of g minus d mu. So, that is the integral of the left hand side is equal to integral of f plus d mu and plus integral g plus d mu plus integral f plus g minus d mu. So, from this equation by using the properties of integral for non negative functions the linearity property the integral of the left hand side is equal to integral of the right hand side and integral of the left hand side consists of integral of f plus g plus plus integral of f minus plus integral of g minus and that is equal to integral of f plus plus integral of g plus plus integral of f plus g minus. And now, we observe that in this equation all the terms are finite quantities are real numbers that is because f plus g we have already shown is integrable. So, this first integral of f plus g plus that is finite integral f minus is finite and similarly all the, all the terms are uh, um, actually non negative uh, real numbers. So, we can again manipulate them and uh, treat uh, shift uh, terms on the left hand side and right hand side. So, what we will do is this term f plus g minus on the right hand side will bring it on the left hand side and the terms f minus d mu integral and integral g minus d mu we shift it on the uh, right hand side. So, that gives us uh, the property. So, shifting so implies that integral of f plus g plus d mu minus this term will give you integral f plus g minus d mu. So, this term we have shifted. So, and shift these two terms on the other side is equal to integral f plus d mu that is this term and this minus uh, f integral of f minus bringing on this side will give you integral f minus d mu plus integral of g plus d mu which is already there and integral of g minus from the left hand side will give you integral of g minus d mu. So, this rearrangement of the terms here once again give you give, give you that integral of f plus g plus d mu and the integral of, uh, of the negative part of f uh, my plus g is equal to integral of f plus minus integral f minus plus integral g plus and now by the definition the left hand side is nothing but integral of f plus g d mu and the right hand side is integral f d mu plus integral g d mu. So, that proves the linearity property of the integral that if f and g are integrable functions not only f plus g is integrable integral of f plus g is equal to integral of f plus integral of g d mu. So, that is the linearity property of the integral. So, we have proved the basic properties of uh, the integrals namely uh, the integral um, of a function which is integrable uh, 
um, of course, it is a finite quantity and uh, it is linear namely if you take a function f multiplied by a scalar alpha then alpha times f is integrable and the integral of alpha f is equal to alpha times integral of f. And similarly, if f and g are integrable then f plus g is integrable and the integral of f plus g is equal to integral of f plus integral of g. Let us look at some more properties um, of this integral uh, which are going to be useful later on. So, let us uh, look at the next property. So, for an integrable function f, so f in L 1 of mu, let us look at, uh, we have already shown that if you mod f is a non-negative measurable function and if you multiply it by the indicator function of a set E, then we have already shown that this is again a non-negative measurable function and of course, this function is less than or equal to uh, integral of, uh, of mod f. So, uh, nu of e is going to be always a finite quantity. So, the claim is nu is a measure, in fact a finite measure and it has the property that mu of e equal to 0 implies nu of e equal to 0. So, whenever a set e has got mu measures 0, the measure of nu also is going to be equal to 0. And this uh, basically follows from the properties of the integral for non-negative uh, functions, because if f is uh, integrable, then mod f is a non-negative measurable function and its integral is uh, a finite uh, uh, quantity. So, nu of e is a finite measure for every e, the function chi e times mod of f is less than or equal to mod f. So, this integral is going to be less than or equal to integral of mod f which is finite. And obviously, for non-negative functions, we have already proved this property that for if mu of e is 0, then uh, the integral over e is equal to 0. So, this property follows from our earlier discussions. Let us look at uh, the integral of, uh, for the integrable function, not the integral of mod f, but let us look at the integral of f times indicator function of e. And if you recall, we had already uh, shown that if f is measurable and e is a uh, set in the sigma algebra, then chi e times f is a is a again a measurable function. And just now we observed that this number is going to be a finite number, because this is again a integrable function. So, let us just um, observe this property once again, that if f belongs to L 1 of mu and E is a set in the sigma algebra, then this implies that chi E times f is a measurable function. So, that we have already seen, because f is a measurable function, indicator function of E is a measurable function. So, product of measurable function is measurable. And we observed just now, if you look at the absolute value of chi E of E times f, that is same as indicator function of e, because that is negative into absolute value of f. So, this implies that the integral of chi e times f absolute value d mu is less than or actually is equal to integral chi e of mod f d mu and which is less than or equal to integral mod f d mu, which is finite. So, what does that imply? So, this implies that integral chi e d mu is a. So, this we are denoting it by nu tilde of e. So, this is a real number, is a finite uh, real number. So, that is the observation and uh, we want to uh, claim that mu of e is equal to 0 implies that nu tilde of e is also equal to 0. So, the claim is that, uh, this uh, claim is that this property. So, let us uh, prove this property. So, suppose mu of e is equal to 0. Then, what is nu tilde of e? Nu tilde of e by definition is integral chi e of f d mu, which is same as, which is same as the integral of uh, chi e f plus d mu minus integral chi e 
f minus d mu. And now, we observe mu of e equal to 0, chi e of f plus is a non negative function and for properties of non negative functions imply if the set has got measure 0, then the integral of this is equal to 0. So, the first integral is equal to 0, second integral is equal to 0 by properties of integrals of non negative measurable functions. So, implies so implies nu tilde of e, e equal to 0. So, what we are saying is mu of e equal to 0 implies nu tilde of e is also equal to 0. So, that is a property we are proving here, but uh, keep in mind that nu tilde of e is defined as a real number for every e belonging to s, but it is not a non negative number because f may not be a non negative function. So, we cannot say nu tilde of e is a measure, we will look at this property a bit later it may not be a measure, but it has some property similar to uh, a measure. Here is another important property. Let us um, look at again the same uh, uh, value nu tilde of e, which is equal to integral of f over e d mu and suppose this is equal to 0 for every, uh, every set e in the sigma algebra. Then the claim is then this function f must be equal to 0 for almost all x belonging to mu. So, let us uh, prove this property namely, so let us, uh, so given nu tilde of e which is nothing but integral chi e times f d mu is equal to 0 for every e belonging to s. So, that is what is given to us and we want to show that if you take the set n which is x belonging to x such that f of x mod f of x bigger than 0, if I let write this set n, then note that this set n is a set in the sigma algebra and we want to show that nu of n, right? we want to show f is 0 almost everywhere and this is a set where f is not 0. So, we want to show this is equal to 0. So, this is the uh, problem we want to show. Now, let us uh, look at, so let us look at consider the consider uh, uh, consider the uh, set say uh, for example, uh, let us look at, let us write uh, the set say a n to be the set where x belongs to x, say that f of x is bigger than 1 over n. And similarly, let us write b n to be the set of x belonging to x, where f of x is less than minus 1 by n. So, now the claim is that the set n is nothing but union over a n, union over b n, n equal to 1 to infinity, union of union n equal to 1 to infinity. That means, all these sets a n and b n, uh, if you take their unions, that is precisely the set n, where n is, uh, where uh, n and what is the set n? n is the set where f of x is not equal to 0. So, if f of x is not equal to 0, then either f of x is positive or f of x is negative. So, if it is positive, then it is going to be bigger than 1 over n for some n. So, if x is positive and bigger than 1 over n, then it is going to belong to 1 over n or if f of x is not 0 and it is negative, that means it is negative. So, it is going to be less than 1 over minus 1 over n for some n. So, it belongs to b n. So, every set n, um, every point x in n either belongs to a n or belongs to b n and obviously, if x belongs to a n or b n, then f of x is not equal to 0. So, it belongs to n. So, n is equal to this. So, n is written as a countable union of sets and all of these are sets in the sigma algebra S and we want to show this union has got measure 0. So, in case mu of n is not 0, that will mean for some n, 
either A n has got positive measure or B n has got positive measure, because otherwise mu of n will be less than or equal to sigma mu of a n plus sigma mu of b n all of them equal to 0. So, let us write what we are saying is the following to show that mu of n is equal to 0. So, suppose mu of n is bigger than 0, then that implies then this condition implies there exists some n naught such that either mu of a n naught is bigger than 0 or mu of b n naught is bigger than 0, because if not then mu of n will be equal to 0. So, let us look at these conditions. So, suppose the first one holds if mu of a n naught is equal is bigger than 0, then look at the uh, integral then integral of f okay then integral of f uh, over the set a n naught let us look at. So, let us look at uh, integral of f over the set a n naught. So, that is equal to integral. So, which is same as integral chi a n naught times f d mu. Now, on the set f or a n naught f is bigger than 1 over n. So, this so this is bigger than obviously, uh, integral uh, 1 over n times n naught times mu of a n naught. So, let us uh, observe that on the set a n naught outside a n naught this function is equal to 0 indicator function of a n naught times f that is 0 and on a n naught f is bigger than 1 over n naught. So, this function is bigger than 1 over n naught right? and outside a n naught is 0. So, this in is going to be bigger than, so it is bigger than integral over a n naught of 1 over n naught d mu. So, that is what we are saying. So, once that is true and this is nothing but this integral and that is bigger than 0. So, in case mu of a n naught is bigger than 0, integral of f over a n naught is going to be bigger than 0, which is a contradiction, because which is not true because we are given integral of f over every set E uh, is equal to 0, which is not true. So, if this holds, then it is a contradiction. Similarly, if this holds, one can prove it is a contradiction, then the integral of f over b and naught will be uh, less than strictly less than 0, not equal to 0. So, in either case, both of these are not possible. So, our assumption that mu of n naught is bigger than 0 must be wrong and hence, uh, mu of uh, n. So, implies so implies that the measure of the set n is equal to 0 and n was the set where. Uh, so, n was the set where f of x is bigger than 0. So, this is set has got measure 0. So, this is what we wanted to uh, prove. So, we have proved the property that if integral of a function um, over f is an integrable function and its integral over E is equal to 0 for every E belonging to S, then F must be equal to uh, 0 um, almost everywhere. Okay. So, this is a very, a very uh, nice property and uh, useful property. Now, let us uh, look at the additive property of the integral uh, over the sets. So, so, this is just now we have proved then f. So, okay, uh, this pro uh, another property that if f is integrable, then uh, f must be a finite number for almost all x. So, a similar argument as before. So, let us prove that property also. It says if f is integrable, then this implies that mod f of x is finite almost everywhere x. So, let us write once again the idea is let us write the set x n to be the set where mod f of x is equal to plus infinity either. So, f of x is equal to infinity or equal to minus infinity. So, together we have put them together in the set n. So, to show that the set mu of n 
is equal to 0. Okay. So, if not, so once again if not, let us write n as x belonging to x such that such that uh, mod f of x is bigger than say some quantity is is not equal to 0. So, if this is not equal to 0 and f of x uh, n is the set where f of x is equal to um, plus infinity. So, let us write f of x uh, uh, bigger than uh, n. Uh, let us write uh, sorry let us write a n to be the set where f of x is bigger than n then each set a n is in the sigma algebra right okay so we want to sorry uh, this is not required okay so let us this is this is not required uh, because we want to just want to show that f is finite okay so now uh, observe that integral of mod x f d mu okay i can write it as integral over n mod f d mu plus integral over n complement mod f d mu right because n and n complement together make up the whole space and just now we observed that um, integral of mod f uh, over a set e is a measure so integral of um, mod f over the whole space can be written as integral over the set of mod f over n plus integral of mod f over n complement and on n the set is on n mu of n is equal to 0. So, the first integral is uh, 0. So, it is equal to 0 plus and sorry uh, uh, yes uh, uh, no let us observe this is so. So, if so uh, so if mu of n is bigger than 0 then what will happen? So, let us assume mu of n is bigger than 0 then this integral is equal to this integral plus integral over n plus integral over n complement. So, that means integral of mod f d mu is always bigger than integral over uh, integral over n mod f d mu right because I am just uh, so what we are doing. So, integral of mod f is integral over n plus integral over n complement let us just drop the second term. So, integral of mod f over the whole space is going to be bigger than integral over n f d mu. So, once that is true and on n the function takes the value plus infinity. So, this is going to be equal to plus infinity multiplied with mu of n. So, if mu of n is bigger than 0 then this will be equal to plus infinity if mu of n is bigger than 0 and that is a contradiction that is not possible not true as f belongs to L 1. So, this integral must be a you know, finite quantity and here we are saying in that case it will be equal to infinity. So, that proves that if a function is integrable then it must be finite almost everywhere. So, now let us come back to the question if f is integrable and e belongs to the set S then the indicator function of e times f is integrable that we have just now observed. So, we let us write nu tilde of e as before the integral of f over e and uh, we observe that this uh, number may not be a non negative number. However, it still has the property uh, something similar to that of countable additive, additive property for measures namely. So, let us state that property that uh, if if you take sets E n s in the sigma algebra S which are pairwise disjoint. So, and E is the union of the sets then the claim is that the series which is integral of uh, E i s uh, f d mu summation 1 to infinity this series is absolutely convergent okay. and if we write E as the union then integral of f over E is equal to summation of integral of f over E i s. 
So, essentially we want to say that the integral of f of an integrable function over a set E can be written as in summation integral of E i s, where E i s are pairwise disjoint okay. and this is uh, we are saying is always uh, possible for f to be integrable uh, function. And because uh, why we are saying absolutely convergent, so here is uh, one should note that when E is equal to union E i, it does not matter whether you write as E 1 union E 2 union E 3 and so on or any other order say E 2 union E 1. So, it does not the union does not depend on the order in which you write the sequence E i. So, that means in this series the summation should not depend upon the order uh, of the terms and uh, all are non-negative that means we should prove that these are absolutely convergent. Then that is what we want to prove that if E i s are pairwise disjoint uh, then the series uh, integral over, over E i of f d mu uh, summation 1 to infinity is a absolutely convergent series and this integral of f over E is summation of integral over E i s. So, let us uh, prove this property. So, let us uh, we have got E i is a sequence of sets in the sigma algebra. They are pairwise disjoint is equal to empty set for i not equal to j and E is equal to union of E i s 1 to infinity. So, first we want to show. So, first claim is that the series summation i equal to 1 to infinity of integral over E i of f d mu, this is absolutely convergent, absolutely convergent. Let us observe what is absolute convergent means. That means, absolute values of these terms that is, is a series of non negative terms that must converge. But so, for that, let us note that absolute value of integral E over E i of f d mu is less than or equal to integral of mod f over E i d mu, right. So, that is the property of uh, integrable functions that absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute uh, value. And for non negative functions, so mod f is a non negative function and E is a disjoint union of sets. So, th that implies um, that integral over E i of mod f d mu, if I sum it up i equal to 1 to infinity, that is same as integral over E of mod f d mu and f being integrable that is a finite number. So, here we have used two things one for non negative uh, uh, measurable functions uh, integral over a set is a measure. So, integral of mod f d mu over E i summation 1 to infinity is equal to uh, integral of uh, absolute value of f over E and f being integrable this is finite. So, that proves that the series uh, integral f d mu over E i is uh, absolutely uh, convergent, right? Because this uh, sum is less than or equal to sum. So, from these two, it implies that this series is absolutely convergent. So, once the series is absolutely convergent, its sum is equal to sum of the partial sums. So, now we can easily write. So, so this implies that uh, the claim holds. So, the series is absolutely convergent, hence integral over E f d mu is equal to limit n going to infinity of the partial sums. So, i equal to 1 to n integral of f over E i d mu and that is nothing but Okay, the partial sums and that is same as right saying that sigma i equal to 1 to infinity integral over E i of f d mu. So, that proves that though the integral uh, of a integrable function over a set need not be measured, 
but it has uh, uh, we can say this is a countable identity property of uh, uh, this integral that integral over e is equal to summation of integrals over e i s whenever e is a union of pairwise disjoint sets e i. So, this is the property that we have just now proved. So, these were some of the properties that uh, uh, we have proved about uh, the integral of integrable functions and now we want to prove uh, an important property. Uh, we want to analyze this uh, sequences of uh, integrable functions. So, we want to analyze if uh, the property that if f n is a sequence of integrable functions and it converges to a function f, can we say that f is integrable and can we say integral of f n s will converge to integral of f. We have seen uh, that this need not be true even for non-negative functions, but they under uh, some suitable condition uh, uh, we can uh, say that integral of f n s will converge to integral of f and that is an important theorem called Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem. So, let us uh, prove uh, the interchange of integral with the limits and uh, look at the theorem called Lebesgue's dominated convergence theorem. So, it says let f n be a sequence of measurable functions such that there exists a function g which is integrable with the property that integral of mod f n s are less than or equal to g for almost all x in mu for all n. Then the claim is if f n s converge to f almost everywhere, then the limit function is integrable one and secondly integral of the limit function is equal to limit of the integrable functions. So, let us uh, observe once again what is given and what is true. We are saying f n is a sequence of measurable functions and all the f n s are dominated by a single function g which is integrable and this dominance could be almost everywhere. So, all the f n s are dominated by a single function g and so the conclusion is if f n s converge to f then f is integrable and integral of f is equal to limit of integral of f n s. So, this is uh, what is called dominated convergence theorem and it is an important theorem. So, let us uh, prove this theorem. So, we are given that all the f n s are measurable for n bigger than or equal to 1 mod f n x is less than or equal to g of x for almost all x and for every n. And we are given that f n x converges to f of x almost everywhere. Okay. So, to prove the required claim for the time being let us assume that this almost everywhere is everywhere. Okay that the proof is not going to change much. So, we will see that improvement. So, let us assume for the time being f n x is less than mod f n x is less than or equal to g of x, where g is L 1 is a integrable function. Okay. So, that implies that integral of mod f n x d mu x is less than or equal to integral g x d mu x and g is integrable. So, that is finite. So, that implies that each f n is a integrable function. Also, also mod f n converges to mod f right because f n converges to f and each mod f n is less than or equal to g. So, that implies, so this implies, this implies that mod f n x is mod f n x is less than or equal to g and that converges. So, that implies that mod f x is also less than or equal to g of x for every x. 
So, that once again implies integral mod f d mu is less than integral g d mu which is finite. So, this L again implies that f is in L 1 of mu. So, under the given conditions we have shown that if f n are dominated by an integrable function and f n converge to f then f is a uh, integrable function. So, to look at the limits let us observe. So, note f n converges to f right and mod f n is less than equal to mod g. So, this uh, implies that look at the sequence f n. So, look at the sequence f n minus g. So, look at the sequence uh, f n uh, minus g. So, look at this sequence. This is a sequence of measurable functions. Of course, they are uh, uh, mod f n is less than or equal to g. So, uh, this will be negative. So, let us look at we want non negative. So, let us look at g minus f n. Look at this sequence instead. So, this is a sequence of non negative uh, measurable functions because mod g is bigger than uh, mod f n is bigger than or equal to g okay, that is given. So, g minus f n. So, is a sequence of measurable functions and let us observe g minus f n is bigger than or equal to 0, because g is bigger than or equal to f n. So, this is a sequence of non negative measurable functions and so let us write that g minus f n is a sequence of non negative measurable functions and it converges to g minus f, because f n converges to f. So, now we can uh, apply Fatou's lemma. So, implies by Fatou's lemma that integral limit inferior of g minus f n d mu will be less than or equal to limit inferior of integral of g minus f n d mu. So, that is application of Fatou's lemma. So, recall uh, we had uh, uh, Fatou's lemma which was uh, applicable for uh, functions which are not necessarily uh, sequence of functions which is not necessarily increasing. So, look at this. Now, let us compute both sides. So, what is the left hand side? So, this is equal to integral limit inferior of g minus f n is g minus limit inferior uh, uh, plus limit inferior of minus f n. Right? So, that is the left hand side d mu and that is equal to integral of g. So, look at uh, that is equal to integral of g uh, d mu and what can we say about uh, this f n is all our integrable functions. So, everything is uh, finite. So, this limit inferior of minus f n is equal to minus limit superior of f n s d mu. So, this is a property of uh, limit superior and limit inferior that limit inferior of minus f n is equal to minus of limit superior. So, this is equal to so this is equal to integral of g d mu minus integral limit superior of f n s. So, limit f n is convergent. So, limit superior is same as f of x uh, uh, f of x d, d mu x. So, that is the left hand side and let us see what is the right hand side once again. So, limit inferior of integral. So, this is equal to limit inferior of integral integral of g minus f n is integral g 
and that does not depend upon uh, in limit. So, it is integral g d mu and then limit inferior of minus. So, that will be minus limit superior of integral f n d mu. So, from these two, so this is less than or equal to this. So, what does that imply? So, that implies that integral g d mu minus integral f d mu, right. So, I am just writing, uh, I am just writing integral this is less than or equal to integral g d mu minus limit superior of integral f n d mu, right. So, everything is finite. So, I can cancel out this and negative sign gives you other way inequality. So, it implies integral f d mu is bigger than or equal to limit superior of integral f n d mu. So, looking at the sequence g minus f n, we got this is uh, the g minus f n is non-negative converges to g minus f gives us this. Similarly, if I look at the sequence g plus f n, that is again a sequence of non-negative measurable functions and uh, application of Fatou's lemma. So, Fatou's lemma will give me that integral uh, integral of f d mu is less than or equal to limit inferior of integral f n d mu. So, a, a similar application of Fatou's lemma to this sequence will give me this. So, 1 and 2. So, 1 plus 2 together imply that integral f d mu is bigger than limit superior that is always bigger than limit inferior and that is bigger than integral f d mu implies that the sequence. So, limit integral f n d mu exists this limit exists and is equal to integral f d mu. So, that proves uh, dominated convergence theorem. So, uh, the proof of dominated convergence theorem is essentially very simple. It is just a straight forward application of Fatou's lemma because mod f n is less than or equal to g implies g minus f n and g plus f n both are uh, sequences of non negative measurable functions. So, apply Fatou's lemma and you have the conclusion that integral of f is equal to limit of integral of f n. So, we have proved this uh, under the conditions that f n converges to f n x converges to f of x and f n x is dominated by g of x for every x. The modification for this for almost everywhere things is simple and we will do it next time. So, thank you very much.